but today i'm not going to share a joke but i'm going to show you three beautiful pictures some of you might have not seen uh, there is a app called face app how many of you had a face app so we 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 uh, just put one of those um face app and we have seen uh, <laughs> amazing couple transformation and somebody said kiranti is with his daughter and uh, that's how it looks lexley how it goes the next one and uh, that's you will see the pastor charles uh, with his face hap and then the good part is this is what my favorite one <laughs> highlighted it is amazing this is lenu and uh, the and then uh, this is the couple again uh, old guy with the angle anyway happy wedding anniversary lift up your bible and say this after me lord jesus um, influence me this morning uh. holy spirit i pray that you will put your words in my mouth this won't be just me talking now for another 30 minutes it will be you speaking to your children i pray that it will be a fall on a good soil i pray for a good soil father i pray for no resistance to receive your word in jesus name amen amen we are actually uh, doing a series on a topic which is most uncommonly talked in the church is called the topic called sex so we've been talking that for the last two weeks and this is the last week and if you have never listened to the last two weeks i would encourage you we are on soundcloud and itunes also on youtube papa saus india you can go uh, and read and listen to that because i believe uh, it is one of the topics that we need to address we need to talk we need to bring it into clarity and the first week we talked about uh, how to honor god with your bodies and how to keep ourselves pure and the second week we talked about overcoming temptations because everyone here goes through temptation nobody can say i am free of temptation if you say that probably you are dead so so everyone here goes through temptation and this week i want to talk about the final week i hopefully it will be the last week uh, we talk about we are going to talk about choices because we are all facing with choices but as i talk i wanted to <clears throat> highlight few statements because this will help us to understand because this is a very shame thing to talk very vulnerable thing to share because if you talk about sex to your religious perspective they will shame you because if you are addicted to porn or whatever or any masturbation or anything that that you have gone through or any anywhere involved in sexual relationship you bring it to a religious person they will shame you you bring it to your worldly person they will celebrate you because this is the life and if you if you bring it to your kingdom they will give you a perspective how to empower you so that's what we are trying to do this so we made some bold declarations and i believe it's good to revisit that i have written down here five declarations today we're going to read one more only god can convict us without condemning us this is very important to know that because the goal of this is not to expose you to light so that you will feel ashamed of it the goal of it so that you will be convicted that you don't need to walk with shame and condemnation so only god can humble us without humiliating us religion is known for humiliating us religion is known to tell how bad you went you know that's why religion tells you how bad you are kingdom tells you how good god is amen and the third statement we made was only god can honor us without flattering us and we live in a culture where in front of people we are known to flatter known to bring things like yeah he is so good but then uh at the back we just put person down you know then we talked about last week whatever gets your attention will get you finally because how we get how we fall into temptation is because whatever gets our attention gets our um gets us finally and then we addressed the issue of you are as sick as your secrets are and this week we're going to talk two more principles and uh, which is very important so if you are taking notes take notes if you are not taking notes take notes so every choices has consequences every choices have consequences because uh, because this is very important to realize our choices have destiny and somebody said every choices has has a destiny and we're very true and i like what john maxwell said life is a matter of choices and of every choice you make 
every choice you make makes you and that's very true someone said we are the sum of all the choices we have taken over the years and the choices that makes that we make makes us and i want to talk a little bit about choices because most of you here how many of you are single and available can i see your hand which means single and not dating lift up your hands okay so the other other guys can have a look also i mean it's good that you it's better to put your hand up here than in pvr cinemas okay can i see your hand if you are single not married okay beautiful so that's a good way to look at it gideon did you look at it <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> all right no it's important to see because you know choices are important sometimes people say you know i don't find a good person in the church you know sometimes uh, we do counsel people and i don't counsel opposite sex but when i meet guys they will say i don't find you know the girl that i am looking for in the church they are out there or or the sometimes the comment would be like i see guys here but in the church guys are so boring <laughs> sometimes you know it feels like church guys are so boring they are not they are so weird you know and the church girls are so parisuttam 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 you know so it's like sometimes the choices feels like you don't know what choice you're going to make and i remember when i was a teenage old i i my mom knows all my story so i'm not ashamed to share i i liked one hindu girl and uh, we were dating that uh, i was i was on a date with her for a while and she would say i love jesus but i can never leave my raghavendra you know and she would even write love letter and she will say oh, jesus never fails slash om shri raghavendra namaga you know and i would i would be happy to receive the letter tear that part out read the left of the letter and and i remember looking back now that was during my high school when my my 11th and 12th standard and and after 23 years we had a high school reunion and i saw her after 23 years i almost had a heart attack you know and i'm glad i didn't marry that person i'm glad it, it you know things you know sometimes we fall in infatuation and we say this is the person in tamil they say katna ivala dhan kattuven illati marathla kayar kattuven that means i, I will t- you know i will <laughs> i will i will tie the knot otherwise i will tie the knot on the tree it doesn't translate that well but you get my point and this is sometimes we we feel in our heart like we make choices we say this is what i'm going to do and how many times you had your first crush anybody had crush yes and yes patrick thank you for lifting your hand you know nobody had crush infatuation yes the first infatuation you thought this is the one because you saw this romantic movie you know tere mera sapna and then you saw this is like wow and then you see this but then it's like a balloon that's popped Psst. yes you look so holy to me my goodness talk to me am i the single person alone going through you know it's so challenging but then as life goes we sometimes we have this feeling like am i going to make the right decision and there is a two category of people it's not up in the screen there are people who walk in extreme cautious and they never take any choices but then there are people who just go wild and then they search and search and search and there are two choices two extreme and that's why we don't know and and i want to talk about choices today and we want to take a biblical example of from the life of samson and the life of joseph it's i don't put it up there but i just want to make some statements here before we go there every choice affects us we are sum of our choices it's not about falling in love it's about growing in love sometimes people say i fell in love with this person if you fell in love you can also get up from love it's true because we are not about falling in love you know i met my wife 10 years ago sorry 2007 i met 12 years ago i can honestly tell you i'm 10 years going to be married next year i can tell you the love that i had for her in 2007 when i met her Benny Prasad somebody might know he was our uh, mutual friend who connected us and that 
time when I met her, the love that I have for her now has grown significantly higher. So it's no more that feelings, you know, like you get that flirtatious infatuation, that goosebumps, that touching, touching, all those feeling, you know, that's, it's gone beyond that. My love for us has grown in such a way that it is so deeper. And I believe even for Arnab and Manat is the same. Even though you're married seven months or eight months now, that you can say, my love is growing every day. So it's not about falling in love. I know attraction is important. You don't, you don't get, fell, you don't fall in love with the brain. You don't say, what a sexy brain. If you say that, probably you need deliverance. You know, you don't, there is, I mean, of course we are attracted. There is a natural attraction is there. But that is not the only thing. It's more than that. So it's not about falling in love. It's growing in love. It's not about just a physical attraction. It is staying attracted. And that's why many couples, they just, you know, when after get married, they just don't take care of themselves. And, uh, uh, and they just grow out of love. They just stay, you know, we have to get, we got married, we have to stay married. Vattalo, totalo, we got married, we stay married. You know, we just stay, it's, it's like that statement of saying, I just got married, I have to stay married. No, 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 it's not about that, it's about growing in love. The Bible talks about love as something, a profound thing. Even Isaac, the way he loved his wife, even you look at some of the uh, stories in the, in, the, in the couple's life, the way they are devoted to one another, it's so amazing. So it's not about just getting a physical attraction to get uh, into a relationship or staying attracted. It's not about initial goosebumps. It's about staying attracted to your partner. It's not desiring to get married. It's about the commitment to get married. So can I ask you one question? How many of you would love to get married? Yes? It's a, it's, yes? No, some of you are like, hmm, so scared to lift up my hand, brother. Hmm? <laughs> Do you want it? It's a good desire. It's a desire God puts in you. It's a, it's a beautiful desire. God wants you to get married. Hello? He doesn't want you to you stay single and miserable and drink hot chocolate and watch chick flick movies on Friday night alone. <laughs> you see? Some of you might have done it. I have done that when I was single. So horrible, you know. So anyway, but so God gives us the ability to choose. He doesn't control our choices. That's true. He doesn't, he doesn't control our choices. He has given us the ability to choose. That means you are free to choose whoever you want to have a relationship with. But you are not free from the consequences of your choices. So a lot of time people say, what if... You know, if I choose somebody who is not a Christian. You know, one guy told me, I'm dirting this girl, but she's not a Christian, but I'm flirting to convert. Flirt to convert. It doesn't work like that. Because sometimes we think, oh, I can, you know, sometimes we have these thoughts like, my, my girlfriend, I could be, it could, she could follow me, she could follow Jesus because she loves me. It should never be like that. Why? Because the, the day will come, I don't know to who I am talking, the day will come, your love will be less in her life and she will stop loving God. I still remember many years ago, I am 42 years old, I am telling my teenage old story. This girl that I dated, she said, I will go to church as long as you go to church. And there were times I never wanted to go to church. There are times my love for God was so low. So we can never expect someone to follow Jesus based on our conditional love. It's very important. Bible talks about unevenly yoked. So there are very extreme cases where God brings a non-Christian into a Christian life and they encounter the Lord. And So I'm not saying there is a rule book here, no Christian, no. I'm not talking about this. This is what I'm not trying to say. I'm not trying to give you a 30 minutes lecture who you should choose, who you should not choose. But I'm going to open up my own life, my journey, some principles from the Bible so that the Holy Spirit who lives in you can tell you what to do with your life. Amen? That's the motive of this. So look at this beautiful thing. Jesus had choices, but every choice of Jesus he made, he made from an eternal perspective, not from a short-term perspective. Many times we make short-term perspective. We say, oh, if I get this one, I will be happy. Happiness is not the byproduct of what you get. 
happiness is the by product of who lives in you eternally you understand sometimes people say i am i am i will be happy if i find this person i will be happy if i if i get this job how many times we know once we get the job or that person it goes our happiness goes down why happiness is a momentary thing we enjoy for a moment that's it but then it falls down so it should go deeper than that look at this verse it's not up in the screen but hebrews 12:2 says he endured the cross for what was set before him so there was a choice jesus has to make 33 and of years old he was single available handsome guy girls were around him it's true he was a miracle worker he can make he can pay his tax out of the fish he can just walk into the city raise the dead guy you know imagine a guy driving a bike here and there like this girls say wow imagine jesus walking into a town seeing a dead man coming to life do you think who is a superstar he but in the bible says because of all this he endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him that's why jesus has to say not my will your will be done because he was at the peak of success he was at the peak of in this what we call celebrity status hello once you build up how many of you have instagram yes i also have instagram i just put my stuff there and get out but you know so how many of some of you have instagram lot of followers lot of people and the more you followers have your that's the thing if jesus was living in this instagram age imagine he is having 3.5 million followers and he just need to make one statement virat kohli is top 10 instagram money makers his one post he makes 1.23 crores one instagram advertisement post you know you and me take selfies and post it how much money we make i don't know kadavuluku dhan velichom but this is the reality so look at this imagine in the midst of celebrity culture if jesus was there and god says you have to go through the cross jesus that's what the bible says he endured everything because he left aside that's why peter could not understand why you are in the peak of your success you are saying you're going to die jesus has to say what came out of you was from god but what came right now is from the devil get behind me satan so look at this another verse in philippians chapter 2 verse 7 it's not on the screen he emptied himself so that he can attain the eternal purpose of his life on earth to redeem mankind to himself this is what i want to address these two scriptures we will keep it as a backdrop when we make choices hebrews 12 2 philippians 2 7 he endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him every time when you make a choice you have to have the cross in front of you why are you making the choice is it to please you or to please the eternal perspective who lives in you and this is not easy i'm telling you it's easy to me to deliver this message in 20 30 minutes but it is tough for us to practice because i have gone through and i am going through not in the relationship because i am married and i am committed but there are other issues that we have to make decisions in our life because choices choices about career choices about your your future choices about your spouse you know recently we had a story one of the daughters from papa's house we just prayed and send her and she arrived to her home her parents wants her to marry a hindu guy she calls and says i don't know what to do and christian family because they found this hindu guy is well off sometimes eyes are blinded how are you going to see how are you going to speak the truth in the midst of chaos you need to know who lives in you then you can able to make decisions so we going to make a quick differentiate between the life of joseph and the life of samson these two guys lived in the old testament and let's look at it it's up in the screen it's very clear and easy so a first one first one is the life of samson you will see from the judges chapter 13 to 16 please do yourself a favor read these chapters we don't have time to read go through this because 
uh, it's a lot of words and and it's but it's beautiful story look at life of joseph from genesis 37 all the way to 47 almost 10 chapters except chapter 38 the, the story of judah going to a prostitute and all those things but the entire 10 chapters devoted on the single family but it revolves around a single guy called joseph so take some time to meditate on this but these two guys were chosen by god for a unique time in history samson was chosen to be a judge that's what happened joseph was chosen to be a deliverer they were chosen by god samson had an assignment what was the assignment samson had to be an agent of hope in the midst of enemies bullying over the people of israel that's what the samson goes through look at this verse judges chapter 13 the philistines were controlling israel they had no hope in the midst of this there was a guy called manova he was praying he was saying lord and the lord showed up to the wife of manova and said i have heard your cry i'm going to raise up a deliverer so beautiful there is a mandate to be an agent of hope look at what's joseph assignment to be his agent of hope in the midst of severe famine and you know the story everything was lost they got into a point where their tribe was about to be lost but they heard that's why i put generally the chapters because this study we can take it for 2 hours i want to give you nutshell in 20 minutes the, the jacob heard there was food in egypt and he sent his son to go send his sons to go and they didn't realize one of his son dead son was already there so his assignment to become the deliverer and what was this god is the defender of his children so god wants to show that he is the defender of his children through samson god wants to show that he is the author and finisher of his promise through joseph see both of these guys have mandates and i tell you guys as i am talking this i feel so strongly the holy spirit is convicting me everyone here has a mandate nobody sitting here saying i don't know my parents want me to be a cmc it i am become a cmc it no 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 you are all of them having a mandate hold someone sand and say you are born with a purpose you're born with a purpose they had three options i'm going to give you quickly the first one to forgive or to take justice on their own hands look at what samson did if you read judges chapter 14 15 and all he got so bitter because he went and and tried to marry another girl from another tribe his parents said hey guys samson please don't fall into this trap and samson said no 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 i want to marry and then you know the story like he he finally couldn't marry this father actually gave this his wife to his best man imagine that you about to get married and the guy who was standing next to you taking your wife and you see what happens he catches 300 fox lights the whole match and kills the whole philistines or you know the fields and everything chaotic life he took bitterness in his heart and a lot of times when we go through a relationship that is not ordained by god and we go through bitter situations in our life i'm telling you this you know i i'm 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 having the fear of the lord while i'm talking this because many times we take this for granted and we say ah you know i'm just going to date you know we live in a casual dating culture also it's okay it's not a big deal nothing serious chumma have you heard that word chumma chumma dating tamil word how many non tamilians understood the chumma yes chumma chumma dating you know the the word flirt actually basically means actually let me tell you this let me go back a little bit the flirting is actually i'm going to make a statement actually a gift god has given in human beings to bring out the romance to so that the couples can come together under the context of marriage okay did you hear what i just said flirting it's a romance that god has given there are different cultures how to make flirt in tamil culture they move their mouth like mm, you know something like that you know they do coke, they do all these things you know <laughs> i don't know if you look at tamil movies they will say all of in the girls suddenly they will do and then wink your eye i don't know man how you do those things but actually the flirtation it's a romantic ingredient god has put inside a person to initiate an interest in an opposite sex 
but devil kind of robbed it today we just flirt with no intention to stay committed that's why people say this guy is very flirty this girl is very flirtatious have you heard that word you know they just talk she's just you know be careful she just smiles that's it don't trust her guys say the g- girls will say that guy he will throw all good compliments on you but he will not stay committed to you have you heard this only one person has heard rest of you are like have you heard this guys we are talking real stuff right yes or no it's true sometimes that's why i say so the flirtatious has become more dangerous because that's when people go into a shell but actually it's a gift god has given to pursue someone it's it's a gift god has given but if you have to do it under the fear of the lord i will explain to you but look what J- this guy J- this samson did he made it in a way that it's like he want to be arrogant i want to do it my way and then he had this consequences look at what joseph had he also had a thing he was willing to let go and see the big picture he was having also bitterness but he was willing to let go and to see the big picture what was the big picture that that i genesis 50 20 says you intended for evil but god turned out for good amen isn't it beautiful look at the second option these guys had to fall into lust and mess up samson did the same he fell into lust i tell you lust is so interesting why because it pleases your eye i was sitting in an airport i will leave the name of the country unnamed and i was just waiting for my uh, my flight and there were two guys one married guy one unmarried guy i came to realize through their conversation i was just sitting minding my business the married guy is saying you know to an unmarried guy he's saying i am married i can't take you know i can't initiate or i can't flirt with a girl all i can do is eat with my eyes do you hear what i just said and he was telling to his single friend you can do it you can just you know make out with her but i can't do this i can just eat with my eyes when i heard this i had this fear of the lord I, you know that time i was married for like maybe this was two years ago the story happened and i had just fear of the lord you know how many times we just say i'm married i won't do it but it's okay it's okay to fool around it's okay to watch someone's you know private parts and feel good about it and i want to challenge us because this is important samson fallen into fallen into lust and what happened the consequence of that he couldn't keep controls of his passions but look what happened in the other way joseph he ran away from the temptations we talked about last week joseph left the clock or the coat and he ran away we don't have the clock we don't have the coat but we have lungis and shorts you know so we may ra- lose our lungi but we not lose our purity amen it's important to talk about it it's important to hold on to the choices that we make number 3 to flirt with sin this is what samson did with delila jo- samson had lot of girlfriends only one girlfriend's name is written if you read her name is delila other girlfriends even his wife's name is not written there the prostitute's name is not written there but only this girl's name he was flirted with sin he made times people came to ask him they said to delila i will give you 100 shekels of silver but you have to find out this guy's strength so you will make up stories that's called flirting with sin we sometimes say i am not really you know doing anything wrong we have a moral framework of doing wrong you know i have not kissed her on her lips i didn't touch her you know we make statements like that i didn't do anything so i am okay that's called flirting with sin one day it will be too late that you will burn up it's true so quiet here are you here alive yes yes or no yes it's true important to talk about it because because sometimes we are like oh you know i am not doing anything wrong i still remember some of my friends in the early part of my uh, walk in when why uh, we would have counseling time and they will say i am dating this girl i am not having any relationship with this girl and i would ask her what do you mean like yeah we never had a relationship with this means they are not talking about sexual intercourse they are talking about everything but not that they saying i'm pure no it's not hello 
if you are hanging out with somebody and he, 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 you are getting physical and the more you get physical in a relationship you can never go back if you start holding hands next day you cannot say from now on i am going to be like indian bow down and say namaste it's not going to work it's always going to increase so you have to create boundaries and sometimes people say oh it's not a big deal as long and churches have stopped talking about abstinence why because they don't think it's going to be a big deal there are churches in some countries i will not mention it we are recording it we are not mention it why because there are some churches they say as long as you're going to get married one day it's okay one of my good friend he got married 6 months down the road he's putting a facebook photo and says oh we are blessed with a baby girl and i'm counting the dates and the thing you know engyo kanak idikide when he got married in march october the baby came this is an express delivery you know and i am i am counting and then i called him and i said macha what happened he said no we had a honeymoon before marriage and to cover up the thing do a quick marriage and have the baby why because we live in a religious world we don't want to be shamed guys it's not about proving to others that we are pure it's us the holy spirit in us uh, am i making sense is is it is it too boring or make sense okay, i'm going to give only three principles and we're going to close this time but look at this both had consequences okay if and uh, both had consequences the tragedy part, tragedy was the consequence of samson he lost his life of course he killed more people we hear the story is a merciful god we hear the story that samson air grew that means god's merciful again to bring the strength we heard all this but look at joseph story his children were joined in the lineage of the tribes of israel 12 tribes of israel can you imagine sometimes you paying the price of keeping yourself pure as long term consequences hello your roommates will make fun of you ah she is just holy 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 person he, he is just you know he doesn't know how to enjoy the world you know what i would rather take that in me and endure it than going with the flow and mess up my destiny am i making sense here does it make sense it's very important because we live in a peer culture no i still remember the first time my friends taught me how to smoke you know i uh, and they they saw the movie where rajini tilts the cigarette and he holds it and everybody was doing it and i tried to do it but the one that was lighted went inside my bar, yeah, you know so i did it but <laughs> it was the other way around it was a painful experience all to prove that you are also a part of the peer group i i remember you know like even the bike moving around driving to show this i took my dad's old bajaj scooter bike with one side engine you know you have to sit like this and drive because the engine is on other side and drove like this in front of a girl and skid under the bus broke my ankle and when my daddy asked what happened the bus hit me daddy hmm? and i still remember i'm 42 years old this happened almost 20 years ago more than 22 years ago i still remember the laugh of that girl that i saw on her face because it was like hilarious yeah sometimes we try to prove to people that you are the superman you are this but the consequences are drastic i want to challenge you guys because the choices we make now as eternal consequences so having said this we are running out of time i have three simple principles that we can learn from these guys the first principle is this fear of god many times we christians don't want to talk about this i wrote the scripture john 5:22 it says for the father judges no one but has given all judgment to the son we live in a culture where you can't even tell people they are wrong they say you are too judgmental have you heard that 
churches have become seeker sensitive we want to be polite with people let me tell you there is an almighty god one day you're going to face him and you're going to answer to all the choices you made one day before him is the fear of god and i cannot emphasize less this aspect because many churches don't talk about it because we want to talk about the love of god jesus is the cool guy the most hip guy the most socialist guy the most you know every jesus does not ignore sin jesus empowers holiness hello jesus loves you does not mean jesus agrees with your sin jesus loves you means jesus helps you to overcome your sin it's important to understand this So Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves you that doesn't mean he is not going to judge look at this verse John 5 verse 22 for the father judges no one but has given all judgment to the son one day guys remember if this is your last day of your life if you're going to go before Jesus and you stand are you 100% sure that your life is worthy according to the standard he has called you to live are oh, you being too hypo- you're doing too strong you're being too you know extreme yeah you being too religious you being too stringent i'm not being stringent i'm not being religious i'm just quoting the words that we read in the bible hello imagine today is your last day you're going to close your eyes what is going to be the opinion of god when he looks you in heaven are you sure that you are okay Are you sure that you don't have a double life a church life and a saturday life we can't live like hell on saturday and expect god to move like heaven on sunday we can't just say i'm just going to hang out with my friends and i'm just going to keep doing my stuff and then jesus still loves me one day it will be too late for us to repent and this is the fear of god we need to have so i have written down it's not up in the screen i have i have to give account to god one day the ultimate judgment is coming it's important so don't get worried about what your friends say or if your friends say you don't have a boyfriend you are still 25 26 you never kissed you never dated ah you are so don't be less impressed by their statements be impressed that god calls you you are my son you are my daughter i am well pleased in you amen don't be impressed with the statements when your friends make yeah. in tamil they say neela unmiyana aambleyada they say you are are you really a man you've not even dated a guy you're not a guy no that's a tell you uh, that's another we will leave that for sex part 4 you know we'll talk about that but you know you've not even dated a girl not even people i still remember when i was 18 This was this what my friend said charles you never even smoked not even a patt pisa bd not even did that what kind of man you are what kind of life you are living boring life hello sometimes life for them is boring when we don't do gk chesterton i don't know whether you heard about his name gk chesterton says the weariness does not come from lack of weariness does not come from pain it comes from pleasure because the more you had pleasure like elvis i don't know whether you are you are known about elvis how many of you know elvis yes anybody likes elvis songs yes no okay we'll pray for you but <laughs> but anyway but elvis he 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 needs every day he needs a certain amount of drugs to just to make him alive he goes to bed on drugs wakes up on drugs that's how his life was and that's why gk sustain in made this point he says weariness does not come from you know pain it comes from pleasure that means you have tried and tried and this and that's why we call hangover on saturday night sunday morning it's a hangover why because you had so much pleasure why you need strong black coffee to kill your hangover hello you know what is hangover some of you like what is hangover brother you are such a good actors man my goodness anyway number 2 point is, time is running bring your passions to jesus stay connected in his presence it's important see these are passions in you attraction is normal 
looking at somebody handsome and you feel like somebody comes and gives you a compliment a workplace it's normal but bring your passions to jesus say jesus i feel this whenever i you know sometimes people say when i am ever with ever this person there is butterflies in my stomach have you heard that thing then they realize it's not butterflies it's cockroaches <laughs> hello butterfly brother there is no butterfly later it's different hmm? all the butter is flyed you know anyway so second corinthians 10:5 says we destroy every proud obstacle look at this new living translation says that keeps people from knowing god we capture this rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey christ this is exactly counterculture what we are going through in the world what it says the world says whatever rebellious thoughts it's not rebellious hmm? there is a tamil song kan pona pokile manam pogalama manam pona pokile kal pogalama that means whatever your eye sees your heart goes wherever your heart f- takes you your feet leads you sometimes it leads us not to life sometimes it leads us away from life that's why the bible says bring those rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey christ who is going to teach you have to teach you have to say these passions are real these desires are real when everybody in your dormitory says i kissed this person i did this i did that i have done this i have enjoyed this this was good and you are staying yourself yes this feeling is there but i am going to keep myself pure why because i am going not in the culture i am creating a counter culture amen look at this what passion version says the same verse we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes god and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up defiance of the true knowledge of god we capture like prisoners of war every thought insist that is bow in obedience to the anointed one amen so what do you do when you go through those challenges you say god i am running to you that's why how the author of hebrew says i run boldly to the throne of grace that's why you need people who can help you that's why we create a network that's why we have life group you open up that's why we ask you pre plug in don't just be a visitor be don't be a spectator be a participant be open up share your struggles amen i've said this before revealing your feeling is the beginning of your healing amen amen so if i do whatever my feelings tells me to do i wrote down this if i have done what my feelings have asked me to do if i didn't know christ and i have just do what i want to do i would be morbidly obese married and divorced many times have plenty of kids and live a miserable and hopeless life because that's what i want this is what people will do just live your life man you live only once just do it all but we are called to do more than this our life here is just very temporary there is an eternal life millions and billions of years we're going to spend life with jesus and this is just a rehearsal for our eternity amen by the way eternal life doesn't stop after you die the eternal life starts when you start giving your life to jesus amen the last point i want to share this and let's wrap this time listen to the wisdom in the body of christ what does that mean there is a wise counsel god has kept in the church that's why you are you need to be part of the church you need to be part of a group where you can counsel you can't just say i'm going to watch something on the internet choose a speaker last week joel austin today bell johnson tomorrow you know ben hin day after tomorrow collins today charles it's never going to work why because virtually nobody can disciple nobody can disciple virtually you can never be a virtual disciple you have to stay connected stay connected wherever you feel stay connected and don't go that place leave that place if you don't feel oh somebody is challenging me the more you are challenged it's a place to grow amen i wrote down here the will of god is often comforted by three things personal devotion that's your prayer right that's your prayer sometimes people say how do i know the will of god you pray second thing it confirmed by the scriptures you read the bible many times we take these two and we say okay i prayed i i read the bible it's fine i prayed lord give me this girl and then the bible says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me fine 
that's called cut and paste theology but the third one is very important it's affirmed by godly counsel that's why we have the body of christ Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, we have the mind of Christ. He didn't say you have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. We, there is a collective wisdom. Last week we did a prophetic prayer by standing and holding hands together. We said, we are together in this. Amen. Nobody is alone. If you are alone, it's, that, it's horrible. You know, there is a big difference between a zebra and a donkey. You know, when zebras are got into a fight, the zebras come together, huddle together, turn their backs towards the, the whatever lion or tiger and kick them. But you know what the donkeys do when, the, when, when they get in trouble? They all join together, but they turn their faces towards their own crowd, their backs towards their own crowd, faces towards the prey and kick themselves to death. That's what the donkeys do. A lot of donkey mentality Christians are there. They don't come together and oppose the devil. They are against one another. That church is not good. This one is not good. This person is not good. They are the holy person. You know, stop complaining. Gather. No one is perfect. There is only one perfect person. His name is Jesus. Amen. There is no perfect church. In Vellu, let me tell you, if you're looking for a perfect church, no perfect church. Only one perfect church, that is the body of Christ, is in the making. Amen. There is no perfect pastor. The most perfect pastor, Jesus, was running the church for three and a half years training. Even that time, one guy bet betrayed him. Hello? So, so don't expect too much. We are all flawed. But we know one thing. The glue is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is what I wrote down. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. I read this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen to God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. He's the one who keeps you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. This is the biggest challenge for many Christians. They assume it. I know it all. Just because we have Google and internet in our hands, we think we know it all. This is the biggest tragedy and a trap enemies puts. You don't need anyone. You don't need a church. You are the church, which is true. But that doesn't mean you are alone. You need a body of Christ. You need one another. Look at someone. I need you. You need me. Can you look into their eyes and say, I need you. You need me. It's very important. You know, it's important. So it's not up on the screen. I'm going to wrap this up with my four simple principles that every person needs to have. Everyone needs to have a mentor, a role model, a friend, and a disciple. Can we say this? Everyone needs to have a role model, a mentor, a friend, and a disciple. Why? Because these four will help you. A role model. Everyone needs, you, need, you can have even a dead role model. You know? And you can have even a role model that is alive. But you need a mentor. Who is a mentor? Who can challenge you. Who can tell you, this way you go is not helping you to grow stronger. You need that. I need that. If you don't have that, please ask someone, can you be my mentor? Amen? And then you need a friend. A friend not just accepts every time you mess up, but also have the courage to say, you better wake up and move forward. Amen. Sometimes we are friends only with ones who agree with us. Jalras. Eh? Hmm? Only with agree. We say, oh, whoever agrees with me is my best friend. BFF. But you have to come to another point where he is my friend who can even tell me the truth even though if it is ugly. I, I've said this before. Before truth sets you free, it makes you miserable. You need to have friends. And then you need to have a disciple. Who is a disciple? That you can pour into that someone's life. You can teach someone. Hey, I have learned this life. This is a challenge. Let's make 2019. A year. Again, this, this year almost, we have seven months have gone. Still five more months. Let's make a decision. I'm going to have a role model in my life. I'm going to have a mentor in my life. I'm going to have a disciple. And I'm going to have a friend. 
not just your facebook friends who likes your status when you do all the filters and put it up in you know we never put the you know we we take pictures of the cuisine that we're going to eat go to a restaurant right we take the picture before we eat have you ever taken a picture after you ate that plate and put it that bones are there the drumstick that has been chewed like worse than a cow you know and all the rice and karopala everything around you know and your everything is spilled you don't take that and put it you put it before that that's the thing sometimes we want to pretend everything is good but inside we are messed up i want to challenge you guys if you are struggling in making choices talk to one of us you know talk to my wife talk to someone who is married here and say i'm struggling didi i'm struggling by i need prayer in this i don't know how to make decisions i'm been compelled but i believe there is a wisdom in this amen my prayer for you is that you will make choices that is going to reflect the eternal christ lives in you amen 